Uh, it's me, myself, Kostas Commander from GRNet, my colleague Themis and uh, Kostas Kagilidis. We have our colleagues from uh, SRC, which is Emir and, um, and Daniel. We have also uh, our colleague from France, uh, Cyril. As I said before, the idea is that we're going to do a short presentation, or, well, sort of, uh, sort of short presentation on what is the, how Argo operates and how it works, and then demonstrate this in a live demo. So with this, I think it's wise to start. So Themis, you want to take the, the floor, please, and start the yes. presentation. But uh, should we add, uh, say that uh, for questions, you can add some questions to Slido? Yes, we do have, we do have a Slido session open, and there's uh, quite a few questions there. Also, if you have any questions, it's easier for us to go to uh, yeah. use Slido for that. And there will be uh, times and uh, no, which we can allocate questions either in, in in some stages or at the end of the session of the session in general. Yes, there are some uh, demo sessions when we are going to see where we're going to see the different components of uh, the Argo monitoring service. And during that uh, time, we can have a small discussion and ideas of how you see and you want to use this uh, service and how we use it. In, uh, to compute what we do. So, I'm Themis Zamani from uh, GRNet and uh, uh, I will uh, present uh, the Argo monitoring uh, service uh, with my colleagues who are going to do the live demo of some of our components. Um, sorry. Um, the Argo monitoring. The Argo monitoring is based on user experience and what we want to do is uh, to compute the status and uh, the availability and the reliability of the services. Uh, users and researchers all around the world have access to a number of services. Usually, most of the services are up, uh, but uh, sometimes, although ev everything uh, looks okay, the user starts complaining and we cannot understand what was the problem. Uh, Usually it's some of the internal functions of the service saying that uh, something is not responding, a 500 uh, issues and problems that we all have, all of the people, all of the service owners have faced. And uh, what it's, uh, what does mean? The service remains unavailable longer than it's expected. Uh, what Argo is trying to do is uh, to emulate uh, the user behavior and try to find out all these problems and monitor the services to provide real-time status reports, availability and reliability reports, and real-time alerts. Uh, based on this idea, let's start the training by using a simple example. What we usually do and how people are reaching us. So. Hi, Argo team. I'm new to EOSHUB and I have a new, we received, let's say that we received this email. I'm new to EOSHUB and I have a new service that I want to monitor. What should I do? What is the process I should follow? The service I want you to monitor is a wiki we have. Uh, it is uh, in a high availability mode. Uh, when we receive a message like an email like that, the response we usually get, we send, is that uh, thank you for contacting us. Before we start, it would be great if we have the URLs of the service you are referring to, and we will start monitoring your service. Apart from uh, some main checks that the service is, uh, is healthy, we would also like to have a description of the main actions the users follow, so as to help you create some checks from the user perspective. And uh, we are requesting the, the owner to open a ticket at um, a help desk. Uh, then uh, the, the service owner replies with an email that says that the service using the endpoint wiki1 as hubu as first instance, and the second instance is at the wiki2 as hubu. Some of the main functionalities the user can do is uh, to log in and create a page. Uh, based on uh, this email and this information, we start, we start to uh, monitor the service. The wiki service consists, as uh, the service owner told us, of uh, wiki1 as HBU and another endpoint, wiki2 as HBU. So, before we start, we must uh, all have the the, some um, of the main... Uh, sorry. Um, 
wordings we use in uh, uh, the monitoring service. The first one is the service, the name of the specific service being monitored. Here is the wiki service, the host name, which is the address of the host being monitored, wiki1 on HBU. Uh, the service type, the service of the, the type of the service, which is uh, for here we're going to tell it to call it a wiki. And uh, every each service type ca can have uh, a defined set of metrics, which are tests that we check in order to find the to the, to compute the status of a service endpoint. And finally, the service endpoint, which is the combination of the service type and uh, the host name for he, for this example for wiki one uh, service type is a week the wiki a uh, service type of wiki listening on port 443 on the host wiki one knows hub uh, eu is the service endpoint so let's start monitoring monitoring the wiki one knows hub eu from the monitoring engine perspective, we discussed it with the service owner and we saw that uh, uh, he requested actually four metrics. Uh, two of them were regular checks, which is the cert validity because the wiki one runs under HTTPS and uh, the HTTP check that uh, the, the URL is responding. From the user perspective, we added two more metrics uh, the login uh, function and uh, the create a page function as, was, as it was described uh, in the email and as it was uh, developed in the probe. So these metrics run for several times uh, during the day and uh, in uh, one of these uh, times it ran for uh, uh, for the set validity we took OK. Uh, for the login, we took critical as a status result. The HTTP check was OK, and the create uh, page functionality was also OK. How all this is depicted in uh, the monitoring item wiki one? In order to say that the wiki one else hub EU is uh, working properly, all of these metrics should have uh, a OK status. So, based on the metrics, the results of the metrics we saw earlier. Uh, the login had uh, a critical uh, state for three hours, for 12 to 3. So this uh, critical is depicted to status, is depicted to the monitoring item, and we can say that the wiki was in critical mo uh, mode for three consistent hours. How the availability now is uh, computed based on this information? Uh, the service availability is based on two numbers. Uh, the first one is the amount of time the service was up for us during the day, one day it was 21 hours. And the second number uh, is uh, the given peri period we want to check. It was for one day, 24 hours. So the availability for the mon this monitoring item is 87.5%. Uh, Let's see the reliability, which is almost the same uh, here, it, which is the same here because um, no schedule time, uh, downtime was um, uh, defined. The reliability is uh, based on the, the period the service was up and uh, uh, the period that it was supposed to be up during the day. That means that uh, if, if a, a downtime was defined for 12 to three, the, the, the defined hours that the service will be up was 24 hours month three because it was a, a day time was declared. So the reliability of the service would be 100%. Um, the other service didn't uh, had any, the other instance of the service, the monitoring item wiki two, uh, didn't have any problem. It was, uh, work, it was uh, working with, uh, oh, almost uh, it's all its functionality is okay. Not almost, all its functionality is okay. Let's see now that uh, for this um, monitoring item, the availability is 100%. We can see now that the availability is 100% and the reliability is also 100%. Let's see how now, how the service, how we compute uh, uh, the availability and the reliability and the status for this, the service as a whole. The service, as it was described uh, in the email, uh, consists of two endpoints, the wiki one and the wiki two, and it is uh, in high availability mode. Uh, as we saw in uh, the previous slides, uh, the wiki one had a problem, uh, one of its functionalities had a problem uh, during the day. So this is uh, depicted 
in uh, uh, the instance, and the wiki was uh, critical. The wiki one was critical uh, for um, three hours. Uh, so for the, this day, the, for this time, the wiki was critical. Uh, in order to say that. Um, uh, the wiki said to find out the status of the wiki service uh, we have uh, we said that it's in high availability mode so either one of the two of the instances is working we can say that the wiki service is working and uh, the status is okay for the whole day so now that the wiki 2 is working properly for the whole day we can say that the wiki service is uh, working properly for the whole day that's how we compute uh, uh, the values for the service uh, with multiple endpoints. So, how is this computed? Uh, when uh, you say that we want to monitor something, you're uh, thinking about uh, an IOS instance or uh, uh, another uh, system uh, like it. But uh, in Argo monitoring, uh, the monitoring is based on multiple components because uh, all this information is uh, uh, structured and used by different uh, components that interoperate in between. So the first information uh, we use to start monitoring is the topology. We're going to say some things about the topology of the monitor infrastructure. The topology is information main, mainly about the monitoring services, the service types they are running, the service endpoints of the services, the way they are organized in groups of sites, in groups of services, and uh, we can model different uh, types of ar uh, infrastructure architectures. And finally, we need actually the information about the service actors. Which, uh, who are the owners of the service and who, who are the administrators of the service. Suppose that you own a site. Uh, suppose that you own uh, the site one that offers two services, the service one and the service two. Uh, service one is a compute service, uh, so that we can say that the service type is compute and the endpoint is service one.eu. Service 2 is an analytics uh, service uh, and the service type of it is analytics and the endpoint of the service is service2.com. Uh, this, uh, you as a site owner, you decided that uh, this site would become a member of a bigger group by complying to a number of requirements. And now we have a new group that has uh, multiple sites. Uh, at the same time, uh, a new project was created and decided to gather all these groups of sites to a higher level of hierarchy to create one more level. So now the topology in the, of this infrastructure is a project that has a group of sites and uh, each site has service types with uh, one or more service endpoints. So this is actually the topology of an, uh, an example of a topology of an infrastructure. Uh, for topology tools, we started, uh, we support a number of different uh, uh, well known softwares like uh, uh, GOGDB, which is the grid configuration DB uh, database from EGI, the DPMT, which is the data project management tool, and uh, simple XML files with predefined format. Um, and he, now we can uh, move to, for this training, we have deployed the GOGDB, uh, GOGDB training instance uh, to show you how the information is uh, stored and uh, the, how, the, how is uh, the topology and the hierarchy of the topology. So, Amir? Oh, sorry. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Excellent. So let's just give you a second. Okay, so uh, Temi said we are going to show you just briefly how the uh, how the GOGDB works as a topology database for uh, this uh, this whole demo thingy. Um, so I'll just briefly demonstrate. I'm not going to go through the whole GOGDB, uh, and in the first part, I'm going to demonstrate uh another core service which would be an ai so in order to access this uh, uh this instance i'm going to use my personal uh, national ai account just give me a second here hopefully i do not print my password so everybody can see and there's a bunch of things about transferring your attributes but 
you can see I use my uh, I use my national ID national AI to access this uh, this instance. Same will be for the second system that we will show. So, uh, GogDB itself enables you to define projects, NGI sites, and so forth and so forth. Uh, for purpose of uh, this exercise, uh, we prepared already several sites, uh, which uh, Tim is described. So let's say uh, we picked the real sites and 2 p 3 in France. Um, so GogDB allows you to define all kinds of uh, attributes which are necessary in order to manage the infrastructure. And in this particular exercise, I'm just going to do, um, I'm just going to add one service. Okay. So I just go find service and click add service. Now, as uh, Temis said, there are two uh, very important things here uh, for us. Uh, one is the service type. Uh, as you will see later on, service type tells us uh, how do we monitor this particular service. So in this case, let's say we will add just one web portal. Um, a second thing which uh, defines for us a service endpoint is a host name. So uh, I need to be three, three R. Um, I guess this works. Let's hope. Um, so these two, uh, these two things are uh, are very important for us. Another thing that you can also use is a service URL where you can put additional information like uh, exact address or and 2p3 or if you are using some weird port and stuff like that so you can uh, this one we also use um, and then another thing which is important here is you have to say yes i want to be monitored here you can define an address uh, where we can send you a notification more about that later on uh, and these other fields i'll just skip for now uh, this is mandatory website um, and one more is about the notifications. Do I want to receive notifications? Uh, and I click Add Service. And success, it's always good. Your new service. So here you can see uh, you added a new service endpoint and uh, it is of a service type by portal. We didn't provide any specific URL, but we expect to see this guy further down the line. Um, that would be it for the GovTB part. I'll hand over back to Temis. Uh, do you want, does anyone want to ask anything about the topology before we move from GovTB? Uh, there's a question from uh, Manuel, uh, if the monitoring information is publicly available for the public in general or only to the service provider. Uh, for Yes, but now we are in the GogTB, that's why I'm asking, we're moving from it. We'll see this in uh, when we're in the web UI part. Okay. Do you want to ask anything about the GogDB? Because I'm, okay. Uh, one moment to share my screen again and I So now that we have the topology of the infrastructure, we need another source of truth, which is the POEM, the metrics and the profiles. POEM was started as the main component we used from the very beginning of Argo and holds the information of service types, metrics, metric configuration and probes. Uh, you could create as many profiles as you want, and these profiles instruct the monitoring instances what kind of test you want to execute for a given service. Uh, the last uh, two years, we, the poem has evolved and is uh, going to be the main entry of, of Argo and especially for our one-stop shop. From there, the infrastructure owner uh, will add all, from all the main information about the metrics, the probes, and um, the profiles you want to use. So it supports the metrics, the repos, the metric profiles, the aggregation profiles, operation profiles, and report profiles that are work in progress. In order to, the, for POEM to 
start uh, organizing this information, it uh, needs uh, the service type information from the topology tool that you are going to use. And for this training session, we're using the GogDB. So actually, the poem uh, has a plugin to connect with the topology tool. Uh, in order, if you want to understand, better understand how Poem works, there is a site with f documentation with detailed information about uh, all the possible actions you can do with Poem now that has changed. Um, let's start with the first information that we need in order to organize the metrics, the probes, and the pro our profiles. This is the repos, the packages, and the probes. You all know what is a YAM repository, which is our warehouses of software. We actually need them in order to install the probes to our monitoring engines. The package, which, is, uh, which enables the quick and easy software installation. It is a collection of items, scripts, libraries, files, and manifests, etc. And uh, it's how we install the, inform the piece of software in our monitoring engine. And finally, the probes which are used to, set, uh, to check the service. And every probe has a list of metrics that we need. One moment to stop this noise. Um, so this is a view from a Poem. We're going to show it in a demo. And uh, so Poem has a list of probes uh, that uh, pre-installed as a library that are used for the services already checked from other infrastructures. You can use them and uh, you can search in our library and find uh, the probes that you want. Um, if you cannot find the probe, uh, there is a documentation with uh, clear guidelines of, uh, about how to create and develop your own probe with the metrics you want. We are there to guide you and uh, support you. And uh, there is a process that we usually follow to create and develop a probe. First of all, uh, we start discussing uh, what you want to check as a service owner, discussion with representatives and developer, or developers of each service in order to agree on the set of uh, monitoring metrics you want to do for your service. The second thing that um, developers of uh, the service start uh, uh, developing the checks uh, and the development life cycle includes the coding of the probe, documentation, testing and packaging. We have uh, clear guidelines for all the steps and how you can, uh, uh, for what you can do to easily create your own probe. Uh, as soon as the probe is ready, let, then we can start monitor. We have a test instance where we test uh, your probe for a um, few, for a period of time, let's say two weeks to one month, and to check that everything is monitored properly. Uh, the life cycle of this is ba based on the following repetitive steps. First, guidelines from the service owners are created from you how to, of how to use the probe and the monitoring team makes the necessary configuration. We test it in the test instance and we verify that everything is working properly and then the probe is moved from the test instance to the production one and is used in our reports to start monitoring the services. Um, let's see what is a metric. You create your probes and each probe has a metric. Uh, has a list of metrics for your service. A metric is a simple chunk of code that checks specific functionality of a given service. Uh, for example, the org Nagios Exchange Portal web check is a metric that checks that uh, the site is responding. The HTTP of the site is responding correctly. Uh, the HRSRC cert lifetime, it's another metric that checks the validity of a certificate and says how many times, how many days are left till your certificate will expire, expires, till your certificate, certificate expires. For um, a specific service, we can uh, list as many metrics as we want so as to be sure that the functionality of the service is checked by the monitoring uh, engine. For example, for our week example, we can use both of them. The cert li we said that we're going to use the both of them, the cert lifetime and uh, the cert li lifetime validity and uh, the HTTP check. So we're going to use uh, the, HR, the cert lifetime and the portal web check. Uh, once we decide, we can see here uh, print from poem how a metric is defined. 
And uh, here is uh, some um, facts that now in our library we have more than 100, uh, 110 probes and more than 350 metrics from dif the 16 different repos. So most of the uh, well-known uh, metrics and probes are included in our library. Uh, now that we know exactly what uh, we want, what more metrics we want to use for each service, we can start creating the profiles. Services and associated metrics are grouped into profiles. Then these profiles instruct the monitoring instances what kind of test to execute for all of the services and for each service. So let's say that we want to create an OPS critical pro metric profile that has two services the wiki, the EOSC wiki that we said in the example, and the Argo Web UI. For the EOSC wiki, we have uh, uh, two metrics, the search lifetime and the portal web check. And for Argo Web UI, we have uh, the Argo Web AR to see that it has results for the availability and the reliability, and the metric Argo Web status to see that we have results for status. This is a profile, actually. Two services with two metrics for each service. This is a view for, uh, uh, from POEM. And now that we have the metrics and the metric profiles, we can continue with the aggregation profiles. We said that um, uh, we're having, we have uh, a topology in our infrastructure and we have to create a profile of how these monitor items in, uh, in, in our uh, hierarchy are going to be grouped. So we have a project, with tools and infrastructure. The tools are the wiki and the web UI, and the infrastructure contains compute and archive services. We must say in the aggregation profiles, which are the operation in between of all these different levels of um, the topology. For, for example, for the uh, Argo web UI, we have three endpoints, and we say that if one of these endpoints is working properly, then the, we can say that the Argo Web UI is working properly. And for the tools, we say that we need both Wiki and Web UI to work in order to say that the, uh, the tools are functioning properly. This is the aggregation profile where you define how monitored items are grouped and form my hierarchies. And finally, we have the operations profile, how two different statuses are combined. This is in principles that, that this is uh, the, the time that we the, the profile that, that we define how adding and ordering operations are performed between status values. Status values. In general, we have a default operation profiles that says that uh, when you find a K and critical, the computed result is critical. When you have a K and warning, the computer result is warning. And when you have a K and a K, then the computed result is okay. And now that we have all this defined in uh, our um, poem, let's have a demo and see how the problem is uh, working. Emir? All right, so <laughs> let me start sharing again. Let me mute this one. Can you see? Okay, I'll see you, you can you can see my, my screen now. Okay, so this is the poem. Um, again, as in case in GOKDB, I will I'm going to use the AI proxy check-in in order to use my national identity again. Remember, yes, continue. And I reached the interface of poem. So you already, uh, the demo is already covered uh, what it does. So I'll just show you the live demo and then we'll post you the same link so you can uh, browse around by yourself. Uh, we start from probes. So let's say in my first demo, we showed you how the word, how the world that you uh, want to monitor looks like. So it's split in three sites. Every site has uh, several service endpoints, which are defined as a service type and a host name. Uh, now we know uh, what do we want to monitor. Now this is a, this is a slightly more difficult part where we uh, define uh, how do we actually get to monitor these things. So we will start from the probes. As you've heard, we already have a bunch of probes. Um, now you've also heard that we mentioned Nagios, so uh, 
uh, and uh, Tevin's mentioned the guidelines that we define. So basically, these are uh, Nagios probes that we use. So they follow the Nagios API. So as long as you have something that can uh, generate Nagios uh, friendly statuses, which is basically four different uh, exit status out of uh, any piece of code, uh, we can plug you in. Um, now this view shows you all these uh, 100 and something probes that we have. So in this case, we will use this very simple check HTTP. So this is one of the standard uh, thingies which are available in Apple repository. It's widely used and uh, uh, check HTTP. So I'll just press here so you can see what kind of stuff you can uh, get out of here. Uh, so the, you can get the version that we configure for you that you can use. Uh, you get the link to where the repository is of this particular probe. You get the link to the documentation so you can go and see uh, what kind of different metrics this, uh, what kind of different uh, tests this uh, particular probe can work for you. And then finally, this is the important part, you get to see uh, in which metrics, uh, we call them metric templates here, because uh, um, you use the metrics uh, when you define your profiles and when you define how you want to monitor your services. But we also have a library of all metrics where they are called metric templates. And here you can see that in all of these different metrics, uh, this particular probe is used. Um, now the probe is basically, uh, the difference is that uh, the uh, parameters are slightly different. So there's a set of things that you can uh, tune uh, when you're using a probe and that may, that's what makes uh, uh, every particular uh, metric here. Now, so when you start using it, you will just come here and pick all the probes that you, uh, that you need. And if something, if there's something missing, then uh, you'll just go and develop it yourself with our assistance, of course, and then we will add it to this uh, repository. Uh, going step forward, so as I said, uh, there's the repository uh, library of all the metrics that you can use as a tenant. Uh, and that's a uh, higher, higher number that uh, Temis mentioned. My link is uh, a bit slow, it seems. Otherwise, this, this just runs. Uh, so right now, the monitoring engine supports uh, CentOS 6 and CentOS 7 uh, packages. So let's pick CentOS 7. And so, for example, we mentioned uh, certificate lifetime, certificate validity test. Um, and here you basically select metrics that you want to use. So let's, we'll try to add this one. Uh, so here you select uh, any metric from the, from the library that you want to use as the tenant and just click import. And it will say something, something. Probably we already imported it. And we move forward to the list of metrics. So here, is, here you see the metrics that you can use uh, in the profiles uh, that you can basically use to monitor your services. So right now we added the cert validity. So cert validity pro basically goes and checks if your certificate on your HTTPS or any kind of TLS speaking service is still valid. Uh, we can see that it's using this particular package. There, there's all kind of different information, but all this comes uh, this uh, all this comes prepared for you, so you don't have to do anything here. Uh, there is one thing that you can tune, uh, and that's this is in config part. So one thing is in the interval. Uh, interval tells uh, Argo how often this service should be checked. So by default, it's 240 minutes. Uh, we do not have that much time for this demo, so we will just change this to one. So every minute it will go and ask how long, uh, how, how much time do we have uh, for this uh, particular, for, uh, for this particular certificate. Sorry, I got lost there for a bit. Uh, now, max check attempts is, uh, these are internals for Nagios. So when Nagios spots an error, it can uh, change the frequency. So uh, in this particular case, we will just say uh, maximal check attempts is one. So the frequency is always going to be uh, one minute. Uh, finally, there's a timeout. So how much time do you want to give the service to reply? And you don't want to put 60 because the 60 is uh, the same as the interval. So you just put 30. Uh, this guy is in second and, and retry and intervals are in minutes. Finally, I just click save. Yes. This. So I tuned the metric a bit, and here you can see all the, all the other ones. I'm not going to go through uh, all of them. We, I'm going to move to profiles. Um, so as Tim said, the profiles allow you to define um, 
how you want to monitor different service types. You can have uh, as many profiles as you want here. Of course, we just have one for this demo. We don't have that much time. Um, so in this profile, you, the only thing, so you, you see this thing is much simpler than all the other, other thing is because you already define metrics, probes, processors, and so forth. So here you just say, I want to uh, use these, uh, these metrics against these service types. So here, for example, I can add, I want to check my web portal service type. Again, you have autocomplete here. You don't have to remember how the service types look like. And the same thing goes here. So we're going to use cert validity. Uh, so I'm basically saying for all the endpoints uh, that are of a type web portal, also check uh, if their cert is good. So save, yes. <coughs> Sorry, I, I, I yeah. Um, and that's it for the, thank you. So that's it for the uh, metric template. So this brings me to my last point and that's the aggregation profile. So this is um, this is the complicated uh, hierarchy that, that Temis shows. And this is what really, this is kind of a rich part of our system. It allows you to aggregate statuses of uh, things in a different manner. So this guy again gets a little bit more complicated only because it gets, uh, the, because it does all these cool things. So first things is that, uh, as you've seen, individual uh, service types will have multiple metrics on them. So when defining what is the status of individual ser uh, service, that is of a type service type, uh, you can say, ah, okay, you can do uh, and or or between individual metrics. So you basically say, um, all the metrics that I'm doing against the web portal have to fail in order for me to say that this is a failure. Uh, or at, at least one of them, but then this was described in an example. So in this case, we are doing a check if the, if, if the endpoint is peaks HTTP and we check if it has a valid certificate. So we say both has to be fulfilled in order for this particular service type to be valid. So I put an end here. Then I define different groups. This was also shown an example. So here, I say that individual sites will define uh, will provide for me uh, two groups of uh, um, let's say capabilities. So they provide a portal, but they also provide Argo, which is a specific size, uh, type of service. And now in these groups, we can uh, we can define multiple service types uh, that belong to a group. So for all of you who come from the EGI world, here you would see something like uh, if this was a compute capability. Uh, here you would see Creed C, Arc C, HTC, Condor C, and then here you would see uh, storage capability. This would be WebDAV, SRM, Grid FTP, and so forth. Here we only have a one. So, um, and then again, here you say, ah, okay, what's the logical operation between an individual endpoints of a given service type? So if you have, uh, this was the Temis example, if you have two endpoints of a type web portal, should I do an end or or? Uh, so if it's a high availability uh, setup, you do an or, because you just care for one of them to work, or if they provide different things, then you say end here as well. And then again, when you calculate the whole availability of your whole site, uh, you can choose whether you want to do end or or between individual, uh, individual uh, groups. And that's pretty much it. Any questions? Sorry, this was very fast. We will give you a link and you can browse around by yourself and there's also documentation. Yes, Costas uh, added the links to the chat. So yeah, you, should, you, should, you should all be able to log in with, uh, with your AI check-in. Check-in AI. <laughs> and you will have a read-only access. So any questions? Can I proceed with the next component? Okay, since there are no questions. Okay, let's continue. Can you see my screen? I hope so. Okay, now, 
we have the topology of the infrastructure. We have want to, what we want to check, the metric profile, how monitored items are grouped, aggregation profile, and how the operations are performed. We are, can create our first report and start monitoring the infrastructure. The next component that appears in, uh, our, um, in the monitoring service is the monitoring engine. We have two engines, usually for all our projects, one in Greece and one in Croatia, for, uh, to support high availability. We ha in our example, we have to check uh, the Wiki 1 as HBU and the Wiki 2 as HBU. So the monitoring engine start uh, making uh, checks, start running the checks for this, uh, the checks we have defined uh, for these two sites, uh, services. The checks are running for Greece, from the one monitor engine from Greece and also from uh, uh, Croatia in different intervals. One moment. Um, how are these, mon these monitoring engines configured? It's not a manual work. As I have already told you, ex explain all the components are uh, fetching the information, structured information from the other components. Uh, so there's an auto configuration that runs every half an hour, usually, or this is uh, something that we can configure for the training. We did it for every two minutes. Uh, auto configuration runs every half an hour and gets uh, the information that uh, wants, the metrics, the topology, which services to check from uh, the topology tool, and the metrics and the profiles, uh, what to check for its service from POEM. Um, every time a change happens, this is automatically depicted in both monitoring engines. So we don't have to do any manual work. We auto-configure the monitoring engines, both of our monitoring engines. Uh, this is uh, where we create I miss, our... Yes? I miss, can you please unplug and unplug your mic because your voice is starting to get distorted. Okay. Hear me? Much better, thank you. Yeah, it's Mac and uh, my microphone. Uh, so, now that the, the monitoring ends are configured, it starts creating the metric results. So we need these metric results to start computing our um, uh, status results and availability and uh, to start the computations, let's say. The monitoring engine should set the matrix result to the compute engine to start the computation. We have, uh, we're using the other component, the Argo Messaging Service to do that. We have a plugin, that, which is uh, another small component, the IMS Publisher, which is a component acting as a bridge from the monitoring instance to the messaging service. Um, it is uh, a part of software, uh, the part of software stack running on every, in, on every monitoring instance and it is respons responsible for forming in predefined schemas and dispatching messages that are, are wrap up the results of the test. Uh, all our this data, the metric data, are saved in average schema. We can see an example here. Uh, this is the schema we use uh, for the, our metric data. This is what um, uh, the monitoring engine sends to the compute engine via the messaging service. I will try to show you, yeah. let's see some real data. I have opened a postman. Due to the fact that uh, we're using API, the web API that I'm going to show you later on as uh, the basic uh, uh, component that stores and uh, all the information, all our data. Uh, I can show you the um, some uh, right. This is the the latest data we get from uh, the monitoring end. So I'm sending the request, and uh, I'm getting this data. Uh, you can see that the metric data it has information about the endpoint group, the CNRS. I will show you the service, which is the web portal, the endpoint of the service, the metric. That the check that ran, the exact the timestamp, uh, the status, the, the result of uh, the metric, the check, and the small summary. 
these are the list, uh, a list of uh, metric data we get from the monitoring engine. So we have the data in a predefined uh, format and this is uh, easily, the, we can easily use it from our other components. Uh, in order to start compute, computations, we have uh, uh, created a small health check for all our components. We have set a number of checks to be sure that everything is working properly. Does data flow through AMS? Have we switched on the computation? Is data correctly deployed in HDFS? These are some of the questions we have. Uh, I want to go into deeper detail, but I put them in the presentation for everyone who wants to see that after the presentation on its own. Now that we have the topology, the metrics and the data, we can start the computation. The Argo Compute Engine is the main component of the Argo Monitoring and uh, is responsible for computing status, availability and reliability of, service, or sh of all the services using the metering re results from uh, the monitoring engines, the information about the topology of the infrastructure from uh, the topology tool, uh, the information about schedule time times from the topology tool and information we can um, support information about the importance of uh, each entity in the infrastructure we call them weights. Um, using the metric data uh, collected uh, to the compute engine, the compute engine is responsible for flattening out the metric results and uh, for computing the service availability and reliability metrics. Results are stored uh, in, uh, onto a fast, reliable dis distributed da uh, data store and the computation starts. We have an HDFS behind it. Computations can be in batch and streaming forms. We have batch and streaming jobs running at all the time and uh, for status and availability and reliability reports. And computation platform gives the ability to easily to give us the ability to easily scale from small and simple tenants to very large and complex ones. Uh, this is how we do uh, Argo how Argo Compute Engine is uh, configured. Uh, as I've already told you, we have uh, Argo Web API as our main uh, short API uh, for um, connecting to the other services and storing all the out data. And the, from the web, uh, web, uh, Argo Web API, we define we get the information about the reports and the profiles, metric, operation, aggregation, and thresholds. We store them in the compute engine and we start uh, executing the jobs. We execute both batch and streaming jobs because uh, uh, some jobs need real-time uh, results. Uh, these uh, jobs are running in Flink nodes and uh, we get also the data from the HDFS nodes. Uh, the results of our jobs, both batch and uh, st uh, streaming jobs, are stored uh, in uh, our data store, which is a MongoDB. Uh, this is also what exactly needs to be configured in the compute engine, uh, but it's uh, hidden to the user of uh, our service. I just wanted to, see, to show to you to see how, man, how the type of information we use in the compute um, engine. Uh, after the compute engine, it's the web API and uh, it's the core API of the monitoring engine. It is used to connect the different components in between and exchange the information. Uh, it's per tenant. It can manage all the profiles we see, we saw in um, uh, the poem and uh, manage the reports. It is used uh, by the compute engine, uh, the monitoring engine and poem. And you can browse uh, status and availability and reliability reports. Uh, I have some results here, AR results examples from the API uh, and it's depicted in uh, the UI in this way and some status results examples from the web API here, it's uh, the GRNet GR endpoint we, we, we declared in, in this uh, training and uh, it's depicted, the status is depicted this way in um, the web UI. Um, the uh, web API supports different types of uh, users. We can uh, create as many different types of users we want. So some of uh, our uh, users want to have access to their own data. So we can give them, uh, we give them uh, view access to display their own data where, to, uh, wherever they want. I have an example for this. Uh, for the training uh, data, I created uh, 
we created the view user viewer here he is um, and uh, you can see for now that uh, for the Argo service for example uh, the uh, availability and the reliability is 100 percent for all the services it's again 100 percent it's for the web portal because uh, uh, we have declared in uh, the topology that GRNet has a web portal and uh, for the site we can get information for the site which is also 100 percent for GRNet site so I uh, created a user that has view permissions on uh, site GRNet and its services you can get the information about the site the availability and reliability of the site the availability and reliability of this of all the services and of course the status of the services you can get the information you can get also the information and display it in your service to say that uh, my availability for this uh, period is uh, 100 percent or the status of my service now is uh, okay to display information about the monitoring of your service um this is the information from the web api and now we can go to the web ui where cyril will display will show you the different capabilities of uh, the web ui the web ui is uh, currently used by the egi the EGDAT, and the european open science cloud where some of um, the services most of the services are uh, monitored cyril Okay, uh, I will share my screen. Is it okay? You can see the screen? Yes, Cyril. Okay, so um, what we have done today is a demonstration for, uh, for, the, for this session. And uh, we have connected the UI to the training tenant. So um, here is the landing page uh, with a summary of different uh, information. First, you can receive here uh, information uh, related to, to topology. So you can find uh, what uh, has been shown by, by him here just previously. The three NGIs which have been declared, the three sites, and the two uh, type of, of services. And for all these uh, endpoints, which are uh, monitored, um, you retrieve uh, different information, like the availability or ability uh, on the last uh, 30 days. Uh, here, we have just a subset of, uh, of information because uh, the tenant is just new. Uh, you have the global availability or ability over this uh, last uh, 30 days. And here you can find uh, the last 500 uh, checks with a summary by, by status. In this example, we have uh, four critical, seven OK, etc. And this information uh, is also uh, available in a table uh, with a level of details uh, which is more uh, accurate. You can retrieve uh, the output of um, the check. And there is different type of filter. Uh, you can check uh, the, the, the last, you can have a better idea of the, the last check here. Uh, on the last table, you, you can see uh, eventually done times, which are uh, declared in the topology uh, database. So in this case, we have, we have no, no done times. And um, this is a summary for the, uh, we will say the uh, global uh, topology database. But on the left, you can also have uh, the same dashboard for a, a sub uh, level of uh, details uh, for the site, in this case. For example, go to GRNet. And you have the same view only for, for GRNet. So, uh, now I come back to previous page. Um, so this is a basic page when you, you just arrive on, on, the, on the interface. Then on the menu, you have different uh, uh, 
possibilities. Uh, so the dashboard is the landing page. Then you can go to the availability or reliability page. Um, this page is a summary of uh, the values of uh, abilities and reliabilities over the last uh, five months uh, with a summary of the, by NGI. And please inform the red and green ones that we have values defined by the, by the tenant. Yeah. Uh, if it's under 80 percent it's uh, red ah, yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah depending from the threshold um, uh, declared in the, in the in the infrastructure uh, you you will see uh, red or green uh, colors depending from from the the, the level of ability and reliability uh, for the last four months uh, we have no data because it's a, it's a new tenant as I was saying previously. Uh, this information is also available through charts. So same information, but different uh, way to display it. And on each table, you have the possibility to copy the data, to export it, and to have it also in, in, in PDF. Um, then you can go to a, to a level, a different level of details. So you click on one name of NGI, and we'll go to, to the site. So it's exactly the same. We have the same information, the same type of information, but at the at the site level, with still some you can access to, to the chart also. And finally, you can go to the different um, endpoints, services. Sorry. Um, and finally, to the endpoints. What is new in this last two pages is that uh, you have also a, a connection to uh, to the status page. So if I click here, I will go directly to the corresponding statuses uh, in the status page. Okay, for I think that's all for 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 now for this part. So now we will go to the status page. It's, I will say, the, the same behavior. We are uh, displaying uh, statuses for uh, the NGI level with, uh, uh, in this case, different colors uh, corresponding to the different statuses, uh, different possible statuses. Uh, for example, for um, uh, critical, we have a red color, and for OK, we have a green one. And in this specific case, we have the uh, missing metric because this tenant is just new uh, in blue. Then you can uh, click uh, on the bar to go to the next uh, level of details. That's the same thing further. You reach the endpoint. And here you are, you are uh, raising the level of uh, metric. And if you go to the last level, you will have the detail of this metric with uh, the output and uh, the reason uh, in case of failure, for example, uh, the summary of the, of the failure. Um, so if I go back to the main page, I think, uh, I've explained everything. Um, and you have also the possibility to, to slide to one day in the past with uh, this little icon on, on the left. Real? Yes. Um, if I can interrupt here. As you can see now in the, in the, in the middle row, which it has np 3 CNRS and it, with a bit of missing data for the, pre the previous hours. But at the far end, you will see that the color has changed. It's, this is the new metric. This is the new uh, endpoint that uh, Emir added. And then the new metric that Emir changed and added to, to all the sides. So you can see yeah. it changed from, uh, from missing to red and then green when it finally came through. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, uh, there is another uh, possibility from the menu is the custom report. Uh, basically, it's uh, custom uh, access 
uh, uh, to, to uh, different information. So uh, instead of uh, going to the main uh, level of granularity, which is NGI in your case, uh, you can directly uh, select a site or a group, depending from uh, your topology. Uh, and then you can um, select what you want to see. Uh, for example, availability or reliability with daily values, um, availability or reliability with monthly values, or uh, statuses. And then you can uh, select uh, a given period with predefined period, or um, you can uh, custom, uh, you can add a custom range if, if, if you want. So um, I will select uh, daily values, for example, for, for site and 2P3, CNRS. Ah, okay. It's a demo effect. I will try another one. Ah, yeah, I know, because there is no data for this one, sorry, because it's, it's quite new. Um, so last seven days, I think it will be better. Okay, that's better now. Um, so basically, that's the same uh, information uh, I've shown previously. Uh, this is only the only thing which is uh, different is that we have a value per day, and uh, you can see also uh, additional information like downtime and uh, unknown statuses uh, uh, percentage. Uh, in that case, you, you can still uh, copy and uh, export information. You have still the, the charts. And uh, you can go to the, the, you can drill down to, to details and get information uh, in the next uh, granularity. Uh, if I do the same for a custom report with status, you will have the same of information and uh, still the same process. You can go uh, click and go to the to next detail of uh, information. Uh, then on the left, you have also uh, a menu about uh, profile details. Uh, you can find different information like topology. That's the same that you, you have in the, in the main page, the landing page, but presented a little bit differently. A uh, description of um, the tenant. And you can retrieve uh, the metrics profile, so uh, the different metrics associated to uh, the, the service uh, which are registered. And the way, the aggregation profile, the way we are computing uh, the different metrics with and or different operation we are uh, um, applying uh, on, on the metrics. Um, so that's all for all the results you can uh, uh, find into the UI. Then uh, you have a different uh, documentation. The first one is the documentation of the UI. You can retrieve uh, information related to the different pages uh, I've presented. Uh, there is also a link uh, external link on the Argo documentation, which is more oh, global. Yeah. Sorry? Nothing. Uh, the documentation. Yeah. And then uh, there is the term of use of the different uh, components of, of Argo. Okay. That's all for me. Perfect. And uh, now I will share my screen for the last time. <clears throat> And the, our last and component is the notification service. If you think we're over, not. It's the last component, though. Uh, so, if it, is there a problem with your service? Always an alert should be sent. Uh, we should start. We analyze the monitoring results and send alerts based on a set of rules. An example of uh, an email alert you can see here with uh, site Budapest, which was critical. You can see that the endpoint affected due to the, which metric it was affected. And you can see the status of all different endpoints of Budapest. So alerts, there are, these are real-time status events that are uh, the basis of the alerts. 
They are generated in the compute engine during computation based on a set of rules that we have defined. You can register opt-in by to the alerts by clicking on the topology tool on the notify flag per site or per service. Uh, what uh, the, the latest change is uh, to consolidate the alerts and send less emails with uh, richer information. So what we actually did, instead of sending just an email that uh, your site is critical, we're trying to inform the owner of the site which, is the pro which, is, which are the problems and why your site is critical. So we say that the site with the best became critical then and the endpoint affected is uh, the SRM endpoint and the metric that created the problem was the SRM put. There is also more information about the problem with the summary, critical file was not copied to SRM and the whole message that returned from the check. Here you can see that we have the summary and the whole message with exact problem uh, of what happened to the SRM endpoint and to the to the SRM endpoint right and to the SRM put metric. Um, alert status summary: We notified that the site is affected due to a service endpoint and a metric, like I showed you I showed you in uh, the previous image. What's the status of uh, the rest of the site service endpoints? Can we provide a summary? Of course, that's the extra information that we want to provide. We say that you are the owner of the site with the best and you have all these endpoints. Now you have a problem at the SRM endpoint, grid 113. And all the other uh, endpoints, the site um, BDII, the CRIMC endpoints are healthy. And you can see in an email the summary of all the endpoints you have in your site. Uh, an example of metric summary is that uh, uh, the status of metrics, you have a site that uh, the endpoint of, uh, that has uh, multiple uh, metrics. Let's say, for example, this uh, endpoint that has all these uh, different SRM um, metrics. You can see what's going on with all your metrics. The endpoint and the metrics that we check, we use. So well, that's what we did with all um, the alerts. We tried to create a summary and um, a view with just one email. If you are a site owner, if you are an endpoint owner, you get the information that uh, all your endpoints uh, or some of your endpoints are healthy and some are not. And if you are an endpoint owner, you have the, the problem with, uh, with some metrics of your endpoint. That's all for me and for the monitoring engine. We can um, uh, have a discussion at the end of the uh, site, I have uh, links to all of our documentation uh, sites. So if you have any questions, we can start. We have one, 20 minutes to discuss about whatever you want. Do you think I should go to the slide though? It's only uh, one moment. Uh, sorry. While Temis is looking for the page of say, the, the display the results from Slido, you can go to the Slido I posted in the beginning and start filling in the poll. I have a metric in my name, Femis AMSC. <laughs> so we, we do have a question with regard to say, uh, where do emails go? The emails go where the topology tell us, uh, tells us to. It depends on the endpoint and it depends on the site contact points. If uh, I, I, can, I can show it in the, if you want, in the, back in the GOC TV. Yes, please. Just give me a second. Uh, I'll Press share, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to take over. Share. Oops. So, Here, <laughs> so uh, to answer the question, I think best is to show you. Um, I, I really ran quickly through this, but uh, you have a bunch of sites. So I added the service endpoint here. And here you can see a big thing is saying email. So in this particular case, if you said that you want to receive notifications, so for example, in this uh, 
in this uh, in, in case of the GOCDB, uh, you say here, I want to receive notifications and notifications will be sent to this address. Uh, in addition, there's also a possibility uh, in certain cases, you can define additional email for individual service endpoints. And again, for individual service endpoints, you can say, I want to receive notifications or, or not. And this will give you different levels of no information. If you want to receive notifications at the service level, then you get a notification that this, your, this specific, uh, specific service has an issue which is affected by metric X and the result of, meta, of probe that is assigned to this metric. Similarly, if you if you, are, you if you will get a notification at the site level, it will give you the current status of your of the whole all of the services or all of the endpoints you have in your site, if one of them fails. Does that answer your question? He said thanks to Slido. Uh, hi. Okay. Uh. <laughs> It, it, it answers my, my question. Thank you. All right. Uh, while we, the Themis is now showing a Slido, can you please go in and fill in the, the first question? We'd like to understand what is your, let's say, uh, role or your, the category you belong to as a, from the major one. Sorry? Okay. I don't, ah, is the monitoring information publicly available for the public in general? or only for the service provider? It's up uh, for now? It, yeah. It's up yeah. to the tenant. It's yeah, the, it's the, up to the, the tenant. The UI is fully customizable and can, can choose. The default we have now for all the tenants we have is that everything is fully public due to Be yes, our exactly. policy to follow open access. But there, there is no problem to, to add restriction uh, with, with uh, AI or something similar. Yeah, we've done that before, but it was it was chosen by as a, as a policy to have the, all the results open. I don't see anybody voting, so I think I will go to the next question, which is. Ah, oh, if you can, uh, you want, if you could please uh, answer the poll. That's what uh, Costa is saying, right? Yeah. You would like to know the category you belong to. If you would like to use the service. How will go you to, use the service? We'll go to one question one by one. Please fill in the okay. first one. we we'll give it one minute. Yeah. And then we we'll move to the next one because I think none of them, not all of them are live at the same point. No problem. It's my first time using Slido, so I, I really don't know how it works. Me either. So, uh, the link is in the chat, right? Yeah. I can post it again if you want. Because it's a bit tricky to go there. Now, I think we can move on to the next question. Do you want me to read it? Uh, would you use Argo to monitor your services? Yes, if it's free, yeah, I'll pay for that. No, maybe. Why maybe? Who, who asked <laughs> me, who said maybe? Where, what is the, what is the... <laughs> no, no, I, I want to see, to understand why not. Why, what is the, say, the, the, the functionality you miss? We can always reach us you know, privately if you don't want There's, to. There's, uh, so, uh, Hanno, wait, uh, raise the hand. I don't know how do you. Ah, oh, sorry. So. Yes. Ah, okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was me, maybe. Uh, basically, actually, uh, I, I already filled the poll before the presentation, um, but uh, the demo was very nice. I think it's very good functionality, and it provides functionality that we, I'm, I'm representing radio astronomy facility, Arslan. 
um, that we certainly partly lack. So we have a lot of sysadmin monitoring, but, uh, not this service level monitoring. And uh, given the demo, I would certainly share it with others. The maybe is just because, well, it's the first time I really had a good look and would have to consider and share it with other people before deciding. We will be more than happy if you want us to share, to give you more information or do a sort of demo for your team if you want. Okay, much appreciated. Yeah, now that we have the training uh, part on, we have set up a training uh, instance, we can easily create a demo for uh, your services. And whoever wants to actually play around with it, can you can contact us and we can give you access to the demo instance so that you can see how it works. Moving on to the next session, this seems to be a little bit of, of more interest to you. This is, we'd like to understand how will you use Argo, and you see that you know, uh, service provider and sysadmins are the ones that seem to be more interested to that. Now, for me, and we try to demonstrate this, it's it, it also has value, value to funding agencies and uh, or let's say a service owner or higher level management people, so they can understand exactly how uh what is the quality of the services offered and why if people have complaints and why and we try to gather all this information you know and present it with nice reports every month to show exactly that the quality of the services and i th let's go to the more let's say open question a more interesting one Please provide your feedback on Argo and its functionality. What feature do you miss? What do you like to see more? So it's monitoring in services, it's EGI, sites, use, interesting service and offered. I don't see any feedback, any um, feature that might be missed because we we are all of that. Does anybody want to comment lively, add some more info? Interesting question. Um, Ahmad asks, so as a service owner is interested in using Argo, what are the first steps? Uh, it's it's an interesting question, but doesn't have a simple answer. They uh, or it's a little bit bit trickier. If you are part of one of the big infrastructures, ETI, EU DAT, or EOS Hub in general, or affiliated with that, then it's quite easy. You just register with their topology providers, which is CockDB and DPMT, and you start to be monitored. If you are not and you have your own, you want to be appear on your own as a different tenant, then we need to discuss and how we can support you on this. In general, this is an option that is going to be supported in the future, but it's not for free. We need to come to some kind of agreement and depending on the size of your infrastructure and what you need to monitor in order to understand what needs to be done. So the first answer, the, the initial answer to this is open and ticket it to us on, our, on the EOS cloud desk and we'll see how we can assist you. Does that answer your question, Amanda? No problem. Okay, moving on. Do we have any other questions that you would like to be answered? So, if we don't have anything else, 
If you don't have anything else, then I have only one more, uh, I'd say, poll for you, which is the for us really valuable for you, not so much. <laughs> I want you to give us your feedback on the presentation and the demo we did. Thanks the, for the answer that already answered. And thanks to the answer provided feedback via, via comments. And uh, you will find the presentation. I will add our uh, contact details and where you can find more information about the Argo. And uh, I will update, uh, upload the presentation to the site, to the Hub event site. Thank you. Ciao. Thank you all. That'll be Bye. all for us if you don't have any more questions. Feel free to contact us whenever you want. If you have any questions, if you want to play with the demo the tenant we have created. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Emma. Да,